strike that unfolded today mm -hmm. at uh, the Gaza refugee camp. Yeah. The Israelis say that it killed a top Hamas general. Mm -hmm. Have you received any intelligence briefings to suggest uh, that that actually was the case, that they were able to, to take out that general? And, no, I haven't. And, you know, the loss of life is tragic. A lot of innocent Palestinians are being killed. And the main reason is that Hamas uses their own people as human shields. So if you're Israel, you're in a, in a dilemma here because to go after their leaders, uh, you're probably going to have to hurt some innocent people. But that's that's the nature of this war, I'm afraid. I think that that's obviously the big dilemma that yeah, Israel is. faces that the whole world is really grappling with. Yeah. What I just want to understand, though, is if this were the United States of America mm -hmm. and there was a target that was in a densely populated civilian area, would the United States have taken a strike like that to, against a refugee camp? I think a better analogy, what would the United States do to to knock Japan out of the war. You gotta understand, this is not normal stuff in the Mideast. Hamas uh, wants to kill all the Jews. It's not about the Palestinians. They're not trying to help the Palestinian people. They're trying to destroy Israel. So when we were attacked by Japan, we declared war on Germany. And how did we end the war? We dropped a bomb on uh, several cities in Japan, breaking the will of the Japanese people. If you had asked the average American, what's the proportional response after Pearl Harbor, they would say the only response is victory. Do you, do you see why a lot of people, especially all these decades after that, would say we have other options here? I mean, this is not a time where our only weapons are dropping nuclear bombs. There's precision weaponry. There's intelligence. We have so much more information. I, I don't know uh, why. So I, I guess what I'm wondering is, in 2023, mm -hmm. when militaries as advanced as Israel's and yeah. as the United States have choices, is it acceptable to drop bombs on a densely populated civilian area where there are refugees, where people are living, where there are children? Yeah, well, in 2023, who would imagine that someone who survived the Holocaust uh, in, the, in World War II would be killed by Islamic terrorists in Israel in, later in life? In 2023, could anybody imagine a group of people would come into Israel and slaughter families, rape children in front of the parents, burn babies alive, put a baby in the oven? Can you imagine that? I can't imagine that. Here's what I imagine. The destruction of Hamas is non-negotiable. I hate the loss of innocent lives. The day after Hamas is destroyed, I hope we have a better life for the Palestinian people. But I'm not blaming. Israel. I'm blaming Hamas. I'm not blaming Israel at all. I know they're trying to limit civilian casualties, and I know Hamas is trying to increase civilian casualties. Is there a threshold for you, and do you think there should be one for the United States government, at which the U.S. would say, Let, let's hold off for a second in terms of civilian casualties? I, I, is, there, I, is there a point at no, which no. you would start to question? No, I, if somebody asked us after World War II, is there a limit what you would do to make sure that Japan and Germany don't conquer the world. Is there any limit what Israel should do to the people who are trying to slaughter the Jews? The answer is no, there is no limit. But here's what you need to do. I mean, I swear Nikki Haley and Lindsey Graham do these interviews and, and to see who could be more unhinged. So it turns out that all of the protests that you and I, most of the RBN's audience have either participated in or strongly support is driving the ruling class mad and they don't know what to do about it. And understand anybody brings up anti-Semitism, ask them, what does that mean? Because what they're doing in media is they're taking real anti-Semitism, people who hate Jews because they're Jewish all around the world, not just in occupied Palestine. They're mixing that with people who are out protesting against the genocide going on in Palestine. And they're labeling both anti-Semitism. But when they tell examples of anti-Semitism, they only talk about the very, how do I say, the actual cases of anti-Semitism, but they're umbrelling in the protest. Just wanna make sure that's clear. Let's get back to this clip with Lindsey Graham. And this is Lindsey Graham going completely just off the rails. Because if you ask the question, I can't remember where I saw it. Maybe it was on TikTok where somebody posed this question that wasn't, it wasn't an American, but it was a Western ally. I can't remember if it was France or somewhere in Europe. Well, if, if, if the tables was turned, let's say Hamas was in 
a hospital uh, filled with Americans. One one Hamas quote unquote terrorist is in a building, a hospital building. Um, let's say Kaiser with four hundred, roughly four hundred people in it. So the United States and Lindsey Graham is trying to tell us that we would be fine with taking at that hospital to get that one Hamas person killing four hundred innocent people. You notice when they oppose the question, you notice they refuse to answer the question directly. What they'll do is give a historical example. Well, what, when we uh, when, what happened when we were attacked by Japan, what, what, what we would have done, what we have said, well, how many lives is too many? 9-11, they want to give every other example but this example. So I'm going to rewind it back just a little bit so we can get a little... Uh, more of his unhinge on this last part here. Let's listen. Put a baby in the oven. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine that. Here's what I imagine. The destruction of Hamas is non-negotiable. I hate the loss of innocent lives. The day after Hamas is destroyed, I hope we have a better life for the Palestinian people. But I'm not blaming Israel. I'm blaming Hamas. I'm not blaming Israel at all. I know they're trying to limit civilian casualties, and I know Hamas is trying to increase civilian casualties. Is there a threshold for you, and do you think there should be one for the— how do you how do you with the straight face say you know they're trying to prevent civilian casualties when this was just last night so the refugee camp was already hit struck and that's what's prompting this these these questions so you're telling me i can't believe this guy is saying this let's listen again but I, I almost sometimes when I'm looking at Lindsey Graham, it almost feels like he's saying outlandish shit and he knows he's saying it almost like he knows that's his role to say it. It, it sort of reads on his face or shows on his face, at least to me. Hold for you. And do you think there should be one for the United States government at which the U.S. would say, let, let's hold off for a second in terms of civilian casualties. Uh, is, there, I, is there a point at no, which no. you would start to question? No, I, if somebody asked us after World War II, is there a limit what you would do to make... You see how the example can't be what's happening now? Because there's no way to make... There's no, there's only, you can only say no. But if you start to go into an explanation based on today's events, you would start to sound like a psychopath. This is why they got to answer the question and then give detail about a different event. Make sure that Japan and Germany don't conquer the world. Is there any limit what Israel should do to the people who are trying to slaughter the Jews? The answer is no, there is no limit. But here's what you need to do. Be smart. Let's try to limit civilian casualties the best we can. Let's put humanitarian aid in areas that protect the innocent. I'm all for that. But this it's funny how. They believe in endless slaughter of the other side to preserve Israel, who they see the other side as an extra central threat. But on the other side, Palestine and or Hamas, who has the same worldview about Israel, when they have the same worldview, then there's they're called terrorists. That's bizarre. This idea that Israel has to apologize for attacking Hamas who's embedded with their own population, needs to stop. The goal is to destroy Hamas. Hamas is creating these casualties, not Israel. I don't think anyone's asking, well, some people may be asking <laughs> Israel are. to apologize, but that's not what I'm asking yeah. about. I think the question here is about no, how, the, to me, how, they carry out, how they carry out the war, and there, there are choices here. But he's feeling very uncomfortable because he knows he's on the wrong side of history here. You get what I'm saying? I wouldn't be feeling all uncomfortable and getting huffy puffy if I felt I was in the on the righteous side when your integrity is being questioned because that's what this is questioning America's questioning uh, the world is questioning the United States integrity this guy and he does and he doesn't hide it well he doesn't hide it well that he knows that he's taking an unpopular stance that that speaks against humanity and and morality he he understands that standing with israel is standing against humanity and, and morality he understands that 
And what they're saying, Zionists and Zionists adjacent people are saying, we understand we're gonna we're gonna take the heat for all of this right now, but our generations coming after is gonna reap the benefits. And we can see that here in the United States. The same sort of thing. Eventually it's gonna be, oh, that was in the past, guys. Now let's just get along and keep this Israel. You see? Let's continue though. But but you mentioned uh, and the Israelis have described it this way. They want to eradicate Hamas. And I Me think too. most people agree. It's OK for them to say it's, to eradicate Hamas. But it's not OK for Hamas to say they want to eradicate them. OK. That that is a reasonable goal. However, how long do you think that that will take? How long? I don't know. Here's is what it, I is think. Is it reasonable for that? I think we are. He is so, he is so bad at hiding trying to hide emotions that he would want to conceal based on what he's saying. He, he looks uncomfortable, like he has indigestion. You know what I mean? Like he looks like, like right here, watch this. You see this? He, he looks like constipated. You see these shots? These aren't the faces of a person who feels like they're on the righteous side. Ah. <laughs> uh. Even her face is telling, too, because her face is saying this guy could have me killed and make it look like it was something legitimate. But I'm forced to be put in a position where I have to ask him these questions because there's millions of people out in the streets protesting. So we have to pretend like we're pushing hard against these politicians. She looks deathly afraid of this guy. A reasonable goal. However, how long do you think that that will take? How long? I don't know. Here's is what it, I is think. Is it reasonable for that? I think we ought to be focusing on the day after Hamas is destroyed, as well as destroying. He's them. so indifferent about Palestinian lives. This is why the Democratic Party is going to lose the White House, for sure. Now that I believe, before when I was just looking at the polls, before any of this happened, um. And you guys have seen it uh, in post duopoly show. We made predictions. I was like, I'm linking that 60 40 Trump. I'm seeing Trump that's going to win this. That's before all of this stuff. 60 40. Now I'm looking at 80 20. 80 20. And, and it's going to be proven out in an, another segment that I do, maybe a segment or two that I do. Um, uh, one of which is saying I can no longer justify voting for uh, Joe Biden in 2024. But let's get back and listen to a little more of this Lindsey Graham unhinged. Is, to, is, do you think that that is on the table that the Israelis are thinking about what happens uh, after? Yeah, I, I, so I, I'm going to have dinner with the Saudis tomorrow night. Uh, this occupation. So you see, you see, this is a dance they're doing. He just changed the subject in the middle of a question. You understand what just happened? She asked a question and he said, I don't know, and be proceeded down a different path. And the dance is, this is how you know it's a dance. Would a journalist be suffice with an answer? <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know. What's going on? Would a journalist be su satisfied with that? Let's see if she's satisfied. Let's see if she pushed back after he says this. Let's see. Maybe she does. Occupation um, of um, Gaza by Israel will not be long lasting. Israel's not going to go in and occupy Gaza. That's a losing proposition. They're going to go in and dismantle Hamas. And when they've achieved that goal, the world needs to come up with a plan for Gaza and the West Bank to give the Palestinians something to live for. How do you know when Hamas is just... He has such a, I don't give a fuck about them attitude. I noticed any, like he, like when he was just talking briefly about something else, he didn't have this demeanor. Then when he goes back to Palestine, the world needs to come up with a plan look, for look Gaza how his and head, the West Bank look how his to head starts Palestinians to move. something to live look at for. His, how do you know? Like, look at the, the, the batting of the eye. Like, he don't give a fuck about the Palestinians. That's a tale. Like, when a person is speaking, notice pivotal words in the sentence. If any sort of, uh, especially in your face, 
any sort of movement specifically only on that word, that's a tell. Now, I don't know what it's telling. That's specific to the situation. And in this case, that's a tell because this is the same sort of like, like this. He's doing this, like this. When he when he's talking about Palestinian lives, that's how he is. That's how the, his demeanor. What is it about Israel <laughs> that has these people? I mean, even the lobby, Israel lobby. And it's so funny. We hand them money and then they hand it back to us through lobbying. Ain't that, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? But they got all of these politicians in their pockets. But it seems like Israel is the one lobby where there's a welcome mat for. The other ones, they got to be convinced, you know? But the Israel lobby seems to have a welcome mat at every uh, Senate member and and congressional member's uh, door, office, in Washington, D.C. Let's continue. Hamas is dismantled. When the Israelis tell me it is because they live next door, I would never ask. When the Israelis tell you it is. The Israelis to risk another attack from Hamas. I would never ask the Israeli people to shorten this operation until they believe they're safe. Now, once they believe Hamas is destroyed, then we need to work with the people in the region to give the Palestinians a better life. So someone says, when should we say enough is enough with all these murders? And Lindsey Graham says, uh... Uh, when Jeffrey Dahmer tells us it's over. That's essentially what Lindsey Graham is saying. Lindsey Graham is telling us that, uh, this will be over, the murders and this, this, these atrocities is over when Jeffrey Dahmer, a.k.a. <laughs> Israel, tells us it's over. Okay, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> uh, we pay for this. We pay for all of this nonsense, these shenanigans. I'm not blaming every Palestinian for what happened. Every Palestinian's not a terrorist. There are Palestinian children caught up in this, and it does break my heart. You see the blinking of the eyes there? You see how he has a tail when he talks about Palestinians? I don't know when I start picking up on these slight tales in my teenage years, and I was able to read people pretty good. But every time he rounds back to Palestinians, he he starts to blink and bat his eyes like it, giving a tale as if what is coming out of his mouth, he doesn't really believe. Well, they believe they're safe. Now, once they believe Hamas is destroyed, then we need to work with the people in the region to give the Palestinians a better life. I'm not blaming every Palestinian for what happened. Every Palestinian's not a terrorist. There are Palestinian children caught up in this, and it does break my heart. I'd like to have a future for the Palestinian people that's more hopeful than they have today. Let's destroy Hamas, and that makes it better for the Palestinians and the Israelis. I'm going to stop this and introduce you to the... Nikki Haley part of this because it's she cooperates in diverting what the conversation is supposed to be about, which is the refugee camp and what the fuck is going on. Isn't that what the title says on the screen for CNN? But Lindsey Graham doesn't want to talk about Palestinian lives, the whole segment. We gave it 45 segments, Abby. Let's move on. I pay your salary, or my donors pay your salary. Understand that, Abby. 